فلا ہادی اللہ و نشہد اللہ اللہ وحدہ لا شریق اللہ و نشہد ون سیدنا و مولانا محمد عبد و رسول صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ و علیہ و اصحابہ و بارک و سلم تسلیما کثیرا کثیرا اما بعد فاعوز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا کتب علیکم الصیام کما کتب علی الذین من قبلکم لعلکم تتقون وخطب رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فی آخر یوم من شعبان فقال ایوہ الناس قد اضلکم رمضان شہر مبارک جعل اللہ صیامه فریضة و قیام لیلہ تطوعا فیه لیلة خیر من الف شہر من تقرب فیه بخصلة کان کمن ادا فریضة فیما سواه ومن ادا فیه فریضة کان کمن ادا سبعین فریضة فیما سواه وهو شہر الصبر والصبر ثوابه الجنة وهو شہر المواسات شہر یزاد فیه فی رزق المؤمن من فطر فیه صائما کان مغفرة لذنوبه وعید قرقبته من النار وکان له من الاجر مثل اجور من صامه لا ينقص ذالك من اجورهم شيئا ثم قال واستكثروا فيه من اربع خصال خصلتان تردون بهما ربكم وخصلتان لا غنى بكم عنهما فاما اللتان تردون بهما ربكم فشهادة ان لا اله الا الله وتستغفرونه واما اللتان لا غنى بكم عنهما فتسالون الله الجنه وتتعوذون به من النار رواه ابن خزيمه في صحيحه وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اتاكم رمضان شهر بركه يغشاكم الله فيه فينزل الرحمه ويحط الخطايا ويستجيب فيه الدعاء ينظر الله تعالى الى تنافسكم فيه فيباهي بكم ملائكته فأروا الله من أنفسكم خيرا فإن الشقي من حرم فيه رحمة الله عز وجل أو كما قال عليه السلام صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ما قال ربنا وخالقنا ورازقنا من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد respected elders brothers friends ladies young ones first of all we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his bounties ni'mats blessings may allah pak give us tawfiq to do shukr all the time may allah protect us from being na shukra ungrateful allah pak's blessings ni'mats favors are showering upon us day in day out every breath we take with afiyat peace security safety is a ni'mat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't realize that how many times do we breathe in 24 hours every breath is a ni'mat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be grateful to him to show our gratitude to him we have to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have been created to worship allah وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ I have not created man and jinn except that they worship. We worship is for our own benefit. And inshallah, the result of this worship, we will see when we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
among the acts of worship is what we have ahead of us fasting in the month of Ramzan the hadith which reminds us of the five pillars of Islam mentions kalmay shahadat namaz roza zakat and hajj so roza is a pillar of Islam we have to fast it's not optional it's not a choice it's not a matter of whether I want to fast or not I will see some people think we will fast when it's convenient for us and we will miss we whatever is not convenient for us once I met a doctor whose name somewhere a long time ago many many years ago whose name was Dr. Siddiqui and while talking he said to me our gharana is a very religious gharana hai. we are very religious people you know we pray Friday to Friday in Ramzan we keep Rosa on Saturday Sunday weekend five days we can't keep Rosa because I have to go to work he's calling himself religious by praying just Jumma and keeping Saturday Sunday Rosas you see lack of worship where it takes a person so we don't have an option a choice whether we want to worship or not we have been created for worship we are forgetting the purpose of our creation we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to get ready for that worship this is why Maulana Yusuf Saab has kept this program of how to prepare for the month of Ramzan and in the announcement Maulana Saab added the word spiritually so that we know that Maulana Saab is not talking about filling up the freezers with kebab and samosa this is also one type of preparation which the ladies go through and it's a really tough tiring work may Allah reward our ladies they are very careful they don't want to work overtime in Ramzan they don't want to waste time in Ramzan so they get ready before Ramzan and fill the freezer and everything so our iftari and everything can be easy for us may Allah reward them for the efforts they go through that is also one type of preparation but we are not here to talk about that preparation even though that is necessary as well that many things which we can do before Ramzan we should do that like shopping you know the big shopping which we might have to go uh, run around in Ramzan we should do that like chawal, atta, tail, piyaz all these things fill them up so you don't have to keep running around meat, chicken, ekat bakra la karke rakh do 5-10-20-15 chicken la karke rakh do ho gaya kaam phir wo chalda rahe kaam usse to bari bari ghari ghari Ramzan mein shopping dorna na pade wo dood thik hai, anda thik hai, wo le liya lekin uske alawa main shopping abhi se karke kaam sab nimda da or up to if we need to do some shopping in Ramzan you know then uh, ask that Tesco me phone se order kar do time waste nahi hoga home delivery to home delivery se mangwa lo apni cheeze Allah Paak ne bhoot asan kar di hai humare liye to we don't need we don't we don't want to waste time in Ramzan in shopping in fact some of our friends say Eid ke kapde shapde bhi abhi se tiyar kar lo کہ عید سے پہلے آخری عشرے میں we need to do some عبادت اعتقاف looking for لیلت القدر so we don't want to waste time of running around the shops for عید clothes and hair cut and this and that do all that from now تاکہ اس وقت time waste نہ ہو so we have to think ahead and prepare so we need to prepare from that physical side as well our personal needs but we need to prepare from the spiritual side as well Ruhani side from our Ruhani side our Ruh should be ready our spirit our soul should be ready to receive the Barakat of Ramadan how can this preparation take place on Tuesday we were going through the Tafsir of Surah Muzammil in our weekly Darse Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Ya ayyuhal muzzammil Qumil layla illa qalila Nisfahu awin qus minhu qalila Awzid alayhi wa rattilil qur'ana tartila Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan saqila Ey kamli wale peghambar Stand up In the middle of the night 
whole night or half or reduce a little bit or increase a little bit and read Quran clearly with tartil. Indeed, we are going to reveal upon you a very weighty kalam speech, very weighty, wazandar, bhari speech utarne wali hai. So over there, Mufassirin say, the connection between Qumil layla illa qalila and inna sanulqi alayka qawlan saqila is that because this weighty speech, kalam, wahi, revelation is going to come down on your heart, your heart needs to be spiritually ready to receive it. And that spiritual preparation is through Qiyamul Layl. Stand up in the darkness of the night and this standing up will give you that spiritual energy and strength by which you can absorb the wahi and the revelation which will be sent down upon your heart. This is the connection between Qumil Layla and Inna Sanulqi Alayka Qawlan Thaqila. From there we understand that if we want to be spiritually ready, then we have to focus on our heart, on our spirituality. We have to do something to cleanse and purify and clean our souls, our heart, by which our heart can be ready to receive the anwarat and the barakat and the rahmat and the mercy which showers upon the hearts of the believers, the fasting uh, sa'imin uh, during the month of Ramadan. If you are not ready for that, then the rahmat will come down like a heavy rainfall. But our hearts will not be able to absorb that rahmat. It will be like a heavy rainfall which falls upon rocks and hills and mountains. They get no share of that water. The water just runs down and goes into streams and rivers and valleys. And the mountains and the rocks get nothing, no benefit from that rainfall. Huh. Where there is the fertilized land, then there the vegetation grows, crops grow, fruits grow, vegetable grows because the land is fertilized. So we need to make our hearts like that fertilized land. So when the rahmat is descending, we can absorb it and the fruits of ita'at and obedience uh, can grow inside our heart and we can show our devotion, our ubudiyat, our ita'at and our devotion and ibadat and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we need to be spiritually ready for Ramadan. How can we get spiritually ready? Number one is Tawbah Istighfar. Mashayikh say, Inna afzala ma tustaqbalu bihi al-mawasim al-tawbah wal-istighfar. The best way in which a person can welcome the seasons of rahmat and mercy is tawbah and istighfar. Because tawbah and istighfar washes our hearts. It cleans and purifies. It get ri gets rid of the dirt and the filth which overcomes our hearts. Now, let me explain this. You know that hadith, when a person sins, a black dot is formed on the heart. If he repents, if she repents, then the dot is wiped out. Otherwise, it stays there. Another sin, another dot. Another sin, another dot. Until slowly, slowly, these black patches surround the heart and the whole heart becomes pitch black. And when the heart is black, then it becomes blind. It can't see. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبِ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ It is not the eyes that go blind. It is the hearts in the breasts which go blind. The heart becomes blind. Then it does not see any good as good and bad as bad. It does not see a virtue as virtue and vice as vice. It gets confused and mixed up between those things. And then it thinks that everything is okay. Even those things which were taken as vice and evil few years ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago, now they become norm. There's nothing wrong with it. It's alright. It's okay. Everybody's doing it. 
So it becomes a norm. So the heart is, loses its ability to distinguish and differentiate between good and bad, vice and virtue. So we need to clean the heart, purify the heart, so we can see with the nur of Iman, with the light of Iman, with the torch bati of Iman, what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. What is vice? What is virtue? We can differentiate between them and we can do the right thing and avoid the bad things. And this will be done, this cleansing can be done through tawbah, istighfar. إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا اعْتَرَفَ ثُمَّ تَابَ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ When a person admits his guilt and repents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relents towards him, forgives him. We need Allah's forgiveness. So we have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, please forgive me. I am sinful. I have erred. I have made mistakes. I admit my guilt. And uh, I'm not going to do these things again. So we have to turn to Allah. First we have to realize that we are sinful. Today, our society has become such that we think that we are the most pious people in the world. There is nobody more pious, more muttaqi, more parhezgar than me. I am the greatest parhezgar muttaqi in the whole world. Whereas the Sahaba used to think of themselves as the worst person on the face of this earth. Sometimes they would say if an announcement was made that the most evil and the worst person should go out of this room, they would say I would be the first to run out. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was one sitting and pulling his tongue. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu passed by and he said, Siddiq, what are you doing? And he said, Inna hara awradani al mawalid. This tongue of mine has taken me to many places of destruction, so I'm punishing it. Meaning he is thinking himself very guilty. I have said many things which I shouldn't have said. I regret those things. So I'm punishing my tongue. Why did I say those sentences? Why did I utter those sentences? I shouldn't have said those words. Abu Bakr Siddiq, who's been given good news of Jannah by the Prophet ﷺ, but still he is thinking of himself as very sinful. Sometimes Sayyiduna Umar ibn Khattab anhu would say, uh, out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I wish I was a hair in the body of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He would sometimes say, look at a bird and Abu Bakr Siddiq would look at a bird and say, oh bird, how nice is your life? You roam around, you eat from the fruits and the berries of the forest and then you finish your life, you go from here and there is no hisab kitab for you, no reckoning. I wish I was a bird. No hisab kitab, no question, no reckoning on the day of Qiyamah. They feel that they are very sinful, even though they are parhezgar, muttaqi. Sahabi Hanzala, famous hadith. He comes out of his house and he's saying, Hanzala is a hypocrite. Hanzala is a hypocrite. Hanzala is a hypocrite. So Abu Bakr Siddiq heard him and he said, What are you doing? So I'm a hypocrite. What do you mean you're a hypocrite? He said, Well, we were just in the majlis of the Prophet وسلم, and our heart's condition was such that as though Jannat and Jahannam were right before our eyes, we are seeing everything. The heart was filled with nuraniyat. And so much rahmat and barakat and noor in the majlis of the Prophet ﷺ. Then I went home and I start joking and playing with the wife and the kids. And I forget everything. And my mind is not all there. This is hypocrisy. This is nifaq. That one condition in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ and then other condition in his absence. So I'm a hypocrite. I'm a different person in his majlis and a different person at home. This is hypocrisy. So Abu Bakr Siddiq said, yeah, this happens to me as well. I'm also a hypocrite. Now, they both go to the Prophet Sallallahu and they start crying. Ya Rasulullah, what's up? Say, Rasulullah, I'm a munafiq. What's up, Hanzal? I'm a munafiq. Why? This condition comes upon us. Prophet Sallallahu was happy. He said, good, this feeling of yours is good. However, he said, oh Hanzala, if you continuously stayed in that condition in which you are in my presence, then the angels will come down and shake hands with you while you would be walking in the streets. 
However, hanzala, sa'atan wa sa'atan. Sometimes that condition, sometimes this condition, both are necessary to keep a balance in our lives. To stay in a nurani, ruhani majlis is also important, but to stay at home, fulfill the needs of the family is also important. Our sharia does not make us majzoob, that we become majzoob and majnoon and pagal and diwana and sit with tasbih in the masjid all the time and forget the whole world and bivi bachi everything. No, no, no. This is Rahbaniyat. This is monk, monastery. This was Rahbaniyat and ibtada'uha ma katabnaha alayhim. This is among the Christian. Islam does not teach us to be monks. Islam teaches us to be moderate. Moderacy in our lifestyle. So, Sahaba's condition, look at their condition. They think of themselves as a hypocrite. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu once asked Huzaifa, Oh Huzaifa, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave you a list of the munafiqeen. He told you the names. My name is not in there, is it? Allahu Akbar. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he is Amirul Mu'mineen. And he is asking, He is thinking of himself so lowly. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu once stood up, Hakim al-Khutbah, and he said, Oh people, my father Khattab used to send me to uh, look after the goats and the camels and I could not look after them properly. When I would come back home, he would beat me up and he would uh, uh, abuse me in this manner. So later on, Abdul Rahman said, Amirul Mu'mineen, what happened? What was that? You know, you didn't need to see all that in your khutbah. And Amir al said, my nafs, my ego was getting a bit bloated. He was feeling a bit amazement and vanity and pride in itself. So I needed to crush my ego. That's why I mentioned all that in the khutbah. So all the people can hear me and my nafs can realize who in reality I am. So this was their feeling inside the heart. They used to think of themselves as sinful and they used to turn to Allah and humble themselves before Allah, show their humility to Allah. We need to first of all realize that I am sinful. My heart is covered with black patches. My eyes sin, my ears sin, my tongue sins, my hands and feet. So. I need to repent from all these sins, from watching things on the TV, on the internet, on the mobile, what I shouldn't be watching, from listening to things which I shouldn't be listening to, from uttering words which I shouldn't be saying. Ghibat, backbiting is common. We don't even realize ghibat as ghibat. And if someone says this is ghibat, who are you to tell me this is ghibat? You mind your own business. You know, this is the, a, a level of our pride that we don't want to accept the truth. So this ghibat, abuse, insult, swearing, you know, swearing at someone. Swearing is fisk. Swearing is haram. You can't swear at someone. And we say the F and B words. We hear them as though this is nothing. So the sins of the tongue, sins of the eye, sins of the ears, we are covered by all these sins. Our hearts are covered with the sins. So, first thing we need to do to get spiritually ready for Ramzan is to make tawbah from our lives of sinning. And we will only do tawbah when we first realize that we are sinful. If we don't realize, we're not going to do tawbah. So, first think within yourself. Don't point fingers at others. Look at yourself. Sit down. Cry. Shed a few tears. Oh Allah, please forgive me, I am sinful. I have heard, I have made mistake, I know I am sinful. Our Ustad Hazrat Mawlana Islamul Haq Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi sometimes in Sahih Bukhari Sharif when mentioning the sattari of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah puts you know, a covering over our sins. Allah does not expose us. Allah conceals our faults. And when explaining that, he would see that there is a special covering on each and every individual. He said, there is a covering on my sins as well. And if Allah removed that covering and my sins were exposed to you, then none of you would want to sit in my presence, let alone study by me. So you wouldn't want to sit near me if you were to see my sins. 
This is he himself, you know, thinking about how, how sinful he, he, he is. His humility and humbleness. So, we have to first of all realize this and then make tawbah. Allah meri tawbah. Allah meri tawbah. Allah meri tawbah. Ab ke baad mein guna nahi karunga. Aaj se saadhe guna chudi. Ab bhi kaan pakade. Ke aaj ke baad kaan pakade liya. I am holding my ears. I am not going to do these sins again. You have to do it now. Don't wait for Ramzan. Don't wait for Ramzan to start. Do your tawbah now. And you know the three main components, ingredients of tawbah. Number one, regretting on the sin. And number two, stopping that sin. And number three, making a firm resolution never to go back to that sin again. And for hukukul ibad, there is a fourth thing as well, returning the properties to the rightful owners. M m uh, wealth, money, property, zameen, house. If it belongs to someone else, it's not yours. You have to give that back to that rightful person. Then your tawbah will be complete. So first, you regret. You show some remorse. You have some nadamat. And regret upon that sin. Why did I do it? And number two, you stop it. If you keep sinning and you're saying tawbah, 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 and you go and sin, you do tawbah now and you do sin tomorrow. You do tawbah now and you sin the day after. Then your tawbah is not right. That's naqis. Your tawbah is not proper. So you have to stop that sin. And number three, you have to make a firm intention never to do that sin again. That will be called tawbah nasuh. What is it called? Tawbah nasuh. Sincere tawbah. Complete Tawbah, perfect Tawbah, complete Tawbah. So we need to do this Tawbah in a Surah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, tubu ila Allahi Tawbatan Nasuha. And when we do Tawbah in a Surah, inshallah, our sins will be washed away, cleaned. No matter how dirty and filthy our heart is, Allah will wash all that filth away, cleanse our heart, purify it. It will become nurani, chamakdar, like that mirror, aina. You clean it, wash it, get rid of all the dirt from it. And it becomes shiny, glossy. So our heart will become shiny and glossy. And we will be able to see with the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ittaqu firasat al-mu'min fa innahu yanzuru bi nurillah. We need that nur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just one incident story from the time of Sayyiduna Musa salam, and we'll move forward. During the time of Sayyiduna Musa salam, there was some drought, famine. Many days passed. People requested, make dua. Musa salam, went out to, with Bani Israel into the outskirts and made dua. And he's there making dua, 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 dua. Nothing is happening. Musa alayhi salam is Musa alayhi salam. Jalali Peghambar. Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Allah, has my status become so lowly in your eyes that I've been crying for so long and you're not accepting my dua? What's wrong? And Allah Park said, Oh Musa, no. Your status has not gone low in my eyes. Your maqam is as it was before. But the thing that is stopping the rain is that among these people of Banu Israel who have come with you to make dua, there is one person who is so sinful that he's never ever obeyed me throughout his life. His, his whole life is indulged with disobedience and sins. Right from the time he became Balir until now, he's always been sinning. He's never done anything good. So because of him, the rain has stopped. You stand up, make an announcement that such a person should leave this majlis because he is stopping the rahmat and mercy of Allah. So Musa salam made the announcement, but nobody stood up. And he made the announcement again, nobody stood up. And again, nobody standing up. But I'm telling you, bhai, there is a person in this majlis who is extremely sinful. Who's never prayed any namaz, who's never given any sadqa charity, who's never done anything good, who's never obeyed Allah, who's always been sinning, 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 sinning throughout his life. He should get up and get away from here. He's stopping everyone's rain. 
nobody got up now what happened is the clouds start coming so musa alayhi salam said ya allah nobody is even got up yet so how come the rain is coming the clouds are coming in the blue sky so allah pak said oh musa that person who had disobeyed me throughout his whole life has repented to me he is sitting in the gathering he has covered his head with his shawl and inside he is crying allah please forgive me please don't disgrace me in front of everyone please don't humiliate me i won't sin again i allah meri tauba allah meri tauba allah meri tauba allah please forgive me allah please forgive me and because of his sincere repentance i have forgiven him i have forgiven his whole life and not only that i am sending the rain because of him because he has become my friend now uski barkat se barish bhej raha hu main kyunki wo mera dost ban gaya hai mera wali ban gaya hai musa alaihi salam said oh allah tell me who that person is i can also meet him and allah pak said musa i concealed his sins when he was disobeying me so i am not going to reveal him after he has become my friend and an obedient to me jab wo meri nafarmani kar raha tha us waqt maine usko chupaye rakha tha main chugal khor nahi hu i am not a tail bearer i am not going to expose him to you i am not going to tell you musa who he is he is my friend now you see with sincere repentance allah's mercy comes if we want allah's rahma and mercy in ramzan we need to do sincere repentance now then inshallah we will be spiritually ready for the month of ramzan secondly if we want to be spiritually ready we have to look at the life of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how he used to prepare for ramzan hadith says that he used to start fasting from the month of shaaban he used to spend most of the month in fact all of the month of shaaban in fasting he would say the best month to fast after ramzan is shaaban and as shaaban would start his rozas would start he would get ready so we have to get ready for ramzan fasting from now so that when ramzan starts we're not shell shocked by the fast oh kya ho gaya yaar pehla roza mar gaya matlab jaan nikal gayi mulsab mar gaya mar gaya mulsab mar gaya to roza bahut lag raha hai but if we had a habit pehle se humne zara thode roza ka sequence chalaya hota to pehla roza humko mahsoos na hota humko to do char panch das roze to abhi system mein aane mein lagte hain idne mein to phir ramzan bhi puri hone ko aa jati hai so we have to get into the system start fasting a little bit as much as we can so that we are ready for the month of ramzan most of shaaban he was fasting if we can't fast most of shaaban then at least mondays and thursdays and believe me if we fast you know we think that it's very long and how am i going to do it we can't do it sheikh yunus sahab was here and uh, at night he got up for istinja and uh, he couldn't sleep so he said wudu karao so we did the wudu and i said hazrat aaj to shabarat hai and acha shabarat hai phir to kal hum roza rakhenge inshallah agar ye ek roza makrooq raha hai lekin main to rakhunga and then he said um, i'm going to make intention of qaza because i've got some qaza rozas on me from my young age so whenever i get these nafil rozas i make intention of qaza allah forgive me but he kept the roza and he told us to keep the roza as well we kept roza as well and you know how we kept the roza on the previous day we ate after maghrib and then after isha sheikh tried to rest and he got up two three times for istinja he got up for istinja at about 2 o'clock and then he fell back asleep and uh, we also fell asleep nobody woke up until half past 3 seheri time was gone so we kept roza without seheri yesterday maghrib baad jo khaya tha wahi thoda sa and for 24 hours until the next maghrib 
we ate nothing, we drank nothing. But due to the barakat of Shaykh, we never even felt anything. On Friday, you know, we did so much. You know, we got up in the morning, we were awake until about half nine, ten o'clock. And then Sheikh lied down for a little bit, 12 o'clock we went down room. Sheikh did Khatme Bukhari Sharif over there. And then uh, for about an hour or so. And then some massage was done for Sheikh Saab. And then we brought him here. In the evening he rested. Uh, about from half four till six o'clock and then lied down for a little bit. But after that he got up at eight o'clock. And then he kept busy in his zikr, fikr, tasbihat, Dulu Sharif. Because it was Friday as well. So between Asar and Maghrib. He just kept sitting facing Qibla and he kept busy in Zikr. So, if we keep Roza, Allah does make the Roza easy for us. So we feel that I can't keep it, how am I going to cope with it? Don't think like that. Try and keep Roza, Allah will help you inshallah. So start some Rozas now to get spiritually ready for Ramzan. And inshallah when Roza comes, we've kept some Nafil Rozas. And we are ready for Ramzan as well, inshallah. Also, to get spiritually ready for Ramzan, what we need to do is start our five namaz daily with takbir e ula. Right? We've got about a few days, about nine, ten days left now, eight days in fact. If we start from now, takbir e ula every namaz, and then through Ramzan, Every namaz with takbir e ula, we can do 40 days namaz with takbir e ula. And when a person performs 40 days namaz with first takbir, takbir e ula means as soon as Imam says Allahu Akbar, we also say Allahu Akbar. That's takbir e ula. Not takbir e sani, not salis, not rabe, not ruku siddha, not second rakat, not third rakat, not fourth rakat, not attahiyat. We come in attahiyat. So the whole sawab of jamaat is gone. So we have to start praying namaz with takbir ula from now to get spiritually ready for Ramzan. So when Ramzan starts, we are into the habit and we are in the masjid before takbir ula. Like Hazrat Maulana Siddiq Bandwi Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi, when he would go somewhere, he would not ask what time is jamaat, he would ask what time is azan. Because azan is normally 15 minutes before namaz. So if as namaz is, he, would, he wouldn't say a namaz 7.45, azan 7.30. So be, he would try and be in the masjid before 7.30. So there is no question of missing out on takbir ula. So we should start takbir ula ihtimam from now. And not only our five namaz with takbir ula, when Ramzan starts and we perform taraweeh, we should perform full 20 rakat taraweeh and 20 rakat taraweeh also with takbir ula. Some people keep sitting at the back, leaning against the wall, and when Imam goes in ruku, Allah Akbar, No. Taraweeh should be recited with takbir ula as well. Then you will see the benefit and the nuraniyat and the barakat of taraweeh come into your life. Make an intention that from now on, I'm going to pray all my namaz with takbir ula and inshallah taraweeh also with takbir ula. And when you pray 40 days namaz with takbir ula, what do you get? The hadith says, you will get two certificates. One certificate of being free from hypocrisy. And second certificate, being free from the fire of Jahannam. Two certificates will be one is that this man is nifaq se bari hai. Is ke andar nifaq nahi hai, hypocrisy nahi hai. Ye satcha pakka musalman hai. Kyunki is ne chalis namaz hai, chalis din tak, pancho namaz hai, takbir e ula se padi. So Allah Paak is ko nifaq se paak saaf honne ka certificate denge. Or dousara certificate jahannam ke azab se mahfuz honne ka milega. Ke ye shaks jahannam ke azab se mahfuz hai. Bhai hum ko ye certificate chahiye ka nahi chahiye. Haji. So inshallah we're going to try and pray all our five namaz from today with takbir e ula for 40 days inshallah. Maybe eat day and a day, two, three more. We have to increase that according to our Hisab Kitab. But try and pray for 40 days with Takbir e Ula. Okay? Ji? So, number one is Tawba. Number two is keeping a few Rosas. Bismillah. 
And number three is praying all five namaz with takbir ula. And tilawat of Quran. Ramzan is shahrul Quran. So we shouldn't wait for Ramzan to start our Quran. We should start now. Recite as much Quran as you can. Subah mein, shaam mein, dopeher mein. काम से आकर काम पर जाने से पहले सुबह में यासीन इकात पारा अगर कुरान चल रहा है इफ योर कुरान देन ट्राई एंड फिनिश दिस कुरान बिफोर रमजान सो व्हेन रमजान स्टार्ट यू स्टार्ट अ फ्रेश कुरान तो अभी आपके मिसाल के तौर पर 20 22 25 पारे हुए हैं टू ट्राई एंड फिनिश योर खत्म सो व्हेन रमजान स्टार्ट यू स्टार्ट अ न्यू खत्म इंक्रीज योर रेसिटेशन ऑफ कुरान फ्रॉम नाउ इससे बहुत फायदा होगा रमजान में रमजान एंड कुरान हैव स्पेशल कनेक्शन अभी कारी साहब ने इतनी अच्छी किरात पढ़ी शहर रमवान अल्लदी उनसे लफीहल कुरान हदलनास हुबैनाथ हुदा हल फुरान सो रमजान एंड कुरान वी हैव टू गेट इन टू द सिस्टम अलहमदिल्ला वी हैव अ वेरी गुड सिस्टम इन आवर मसाजिद मुफ्ती शबीर साहब वंस मैंशन फ्राम सऊदी एम बस ई खेम मस्जिद साजिदीन and he was here in, in it was in ramzan and he was asar and after asar everybody sat with the quran reading around everywhere and the arab said wow kitna acha mahol hai what a beautiful mahol here we don't have this in our masajid i wish we had this in our masajid as well meaning nobody reads quran over there alhamdulillah pak has given us the tawfiq to recite quran over here such a good environment we should try and start that environment and that mahol from now of recitation of quran so increase your recitation of quran in order to be ready for the month of ramzan and also one more thing ramzan we keep roza and in roza we have to stay hungry so If we can't keep Rosa in Shaaban, at least try and stay a little bit hungry. Reduce your daily intake of food. अभी से कुछ खाना कम कर दो, है ना? Breakfast छोड़ दो, या breakfast में सिर्फ एक biscuit खा लो instead of paratha and anda and whatever. Lunch में थोड़ा कम कर दो, sandwich खा लिया, शाम को थोड़ा कम कर दिया, तो उससे क्या होगा? आपका मैदा will get ready. and prepare for ramzan and you won't feel that hunger in ramzan you know by instructing us to fast allah subhanahu wa taala is trying to teach us to think about those who are less fortunate around the world there are many people in the world who are hungry thirsty who have nothing to survive on we can't do much for them at least we can stay hungry and thirsty so our hearts can soften we can make dua for them otherwise when we eat too much our hearts become hard and we don't want to give any sadqa we don't even want to make dua or anything for them we just bother about ourselves we don't care about anyone else so by keeping us hungry and thirsty for 30 days allah subhanahu wa taala wants us to bring that feeling of fuqara and poor people in our hearts so we can make dua for them bishr hafi rahmatullah alayhi a great wali of allah once he was in the masjid and uh, it was winter and he was sitting and shivering someone said you got the blanket by your side why don't you you know wear it and he said i'm not using it because there are many poor people in the slums around the city who got no blanket to cover themselves and i don't have enough money to provide blankets for all of them so the least i can do is feel this shivering for a little bit so i can realize what they must be going through i can at least make some duas for them that allah make it easy for them so when we stay a little bit hungry and thirsty we feel for the poor people around the world this is one of the aims of fasting and roza and this can only be achieved if we also stay a little bit hungry thirsty control our diets control our desires control our food
and not only you know controlling our, our food and our diet today we need to control something else as well our mobile phones our social media connections we are so much attached to our mobiles we can't stay without them every minute we are on our mobiles social media there's so much out there whether it's whatsapp whether it's facebook whether it's twitter whether it's snapchat whether it's instagram whether it's this that i don't know allah knows what else is on there i'm not into all those things either i went for bayan one place and i said to one of the young youngsters who was with me what should i see about you know these social media one of them you should talk about you know snapchat because many people at the time of iftari they take photos of their iftari and send it down to their friends instead of making dua so it's dua time and they are on their phones and look i've got this for iftari and that for iftari and my mom's doing this and my sister's cooking that and my dad's doing that why do you need to be on your social media at that time when dua is accepted so we need to fast from our social media as well and we have to start that now put control on your social media on your mobile from now something i find beneficial is when coming to the masjid leave your mobile at home don't bring your mobile in your pocket to the masjid because you won't have any distraction in the masjid and if you feel that no i need my mobile just think 10 years ago when there was no mobile what happened then and then life used to go on as someone said that you know uh, दादा दादा अब्बा यू नो ये पिछले जमाने में ये आप लोग ये मोबाइल के बगैर कैसे जिंदगी गुजारते थे एंड दादा रिप्लाइड जैसे तुम लोग आजकल दादा और नाना के बगैर जिंदगी गुजार रहे हो तो ऐसे ही हो गया है कि सो मच अटैचमेंट टू दिस दैट वी डोंट नो अबाउट आवर रिलेटिव वॉज गोइंग ऑन इन द हाउस नो बट इज रेडी टू हेल्प द मदर इन द कुकिंग और वॉशिंग एंड क्लीनिंग and everybody for themselves and even in ramzan we are on our mobiles so we need to fast from our mobiles as well before 10 years ago we used to say fast from the tv ke ramzan mein tv ka plug kaat ke phenk do ke pura ramzan tv nahi kholne ka to ab to tv to ghar mein pata nahi koi kholta bhi hai ke nahi kholta hai ab to ye mobile pe sab log baithe hote hain तो अब टीवी मोबाइल को कहां फेंकने को कहें कि मोबाइल को काट के फेंक दो ये तो नहीं काट सकते लेकिन ये कि उससे कनेक्शन को काटना पड़ेगा on the the aim of ramzan and fasting is to control our desires today our desires are out of control you know there is there are so many fitnas out there yesterday you know some apa who's bayat to me she uh, somewhere uh, up north she tested me monana saab you know i go around teaching in people's homes and i, I i'm really disturbed because you know i'm seeing that many youngsters boys and girls are into homosexuality and when i say something to them they say well what's wrong with it and they say well our parents you know you, uh, uh, never let us interact with boys so now we are attracted towards girls so a uh, girls a uh, girls they have a relationship among them and this is so mind boggling and it's happening the desires are out of control we have no control over our desires our mind is boggled it it falls for any fitna so ramzan is a good time to sit down think contemplate ponder over our conditions what we are doing where we are heading wrong and how we should control our desires whether it is related to eating drinking habits you know if someone has a habit of drinking nauz billah alcohol give up in ramzan drinking uh, you know other stuff drugs or etc give up in ramzan so eating drinking sexual desires you know zina someone has a habit of committing zina fornication give up in ramzan someone has this types of habit nauz billah homosexuality get out of that relationship you know what is haram is haram we are muslims we have to abide by the law of allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam by what quran and hadith teaches so we can't just let ourselves lose behind all our desires and do whatever we want no we are bound by the instructions and laws uh, instructed and guidelines given us to us by allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam so ramzan is a month to control ourselves smoking give us smoking in ramzan 
We have long rosas. We only have four hours night. So why do you have to smoke in Ramzan? Give up smoking in Ramzan. Make an intention that inshallah I'm giving up. I'm not going to smoke in Ramzan. And after Ramzan as well, I'm not going to go back to smoking. So it's a good time to give up smoking. Smoking is bad for your health. Many muftiyane kiram say smoking is haram. Because of the damage it does, does to your body, to your lungs, to your heart, to your teeth. And because of the burden it puts on your pocket, the money you waste in smoking. This is why they say smoking is not allowed. So give up smoking in Ramzan. So you have to be mentally prepared and get ready to receive the month of Ramzan by thinking where am I going wrong and what, where, what should I be doing and what should I be avoiding. Then, inshallah, if we are ready from now spiritually, we have kept some rosas as well. We are reciting Quran, we are making some du'as, we have done our tawbah, astaghfar, Ramzan starts. Then you know the first night of Ramzan, the cool breeze comes. And the, the, the Jannat's hoors, they are also happy and rejoicing. And then they inquire and Rizwan says to them, Ramzan has started. Allah sends the Malaika to chain the rogue shayateen, the khabis, jinns, the, the, the leaders, jo bade bade shayateen hai, they are chained and thrown into the ocean. The small lallu panju, they might be running around. But the big ones who are scheming, who make all the schemes, they are chained and thrown into the uh, 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 oceans. Maradatul. And the gates of Jannat are opened up, the gates of Jahannam are closed. So Allah's rahmat starts right from the time we see the crescent and we start our taraweeh and Ramzan and you will see the Bago Bahar and running around and mashallah the Anwarat and Barakat of Ramzan start. So we have to start, we have to be ready for that. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give a special sermon on the 29th of Sha'ban in which we would say, oh people, a special month has come upon you, the month of Ramadan. Allah has made the fasting of Ramadan farz and the qiyam in Ramadan sunnat. In Ramzan is a night which is better than a thousand months. Allah has said that uh, 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 Nabi Karim sallam says, Whosoever draws closer to Allah by one nafil ibadat, sunnat or nafil ibadat, nafil namaz like salatul tasbih or chashd or ishraq, then that nafil sawab will be so much that it will be equal to the sawab of one farz. Because the sawab is of faraz is many many times more than the sawab of nafil. So in Ramzan, the nafil sawab increases to the sawab of a farz. And one farz sawab is equal to 70 farz. That's how strong and powerful the ibadat of Ramzan is. And then he said, this month is a month of patience. And the reward of sabr is jannat. Shahru sabr. And reward of sabr is jannat. So do sabr. In another hadith he said, if someone abuses you, swears at you, or argues and fights with you, then don't retaliate. Just say, I am fasting. I'm not going to say anything. Just turn away from there. Be patient. Do sabr. Don't retaliate. He said, this is shahrul muwasat. Caring, sharing, thinking about one another. We have a good environment, alhamdulillah, wherein we send food to our neighbors. Custard, firni, samosa, bajia, pakora, kebab. You know, kids go around neighbors' houses, jao, fulan ko diao, fulan ko diao. So kids also feel good happiness at, you know, iftar time. This is good. This should remain. This should increase. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Zal Ghifadi radiyallahu anhu, Ida tabakhta marakan faakthir uh, when you cook some gravy then put a little bit extra water inside it and send some to your neighbors as well so this is, should be done throughout the year if we can't do it throughout the year then at least in Ramzan we think about our neighbors and send some food to them this is shahrul muwasat and it says shahrun yuzadu fihi bi rizqil mu'min in Ramzan your rizq and sustenance is increased 
Now some people take the meaning of this that we should eat more in Ramzan. Because rosy bar jati hai. Nahi. Wo rosy jo barti hai, wo pure saal ki rosy barti hai. Tumhari income Allah paa us mein kuch barakat de denge. Business mein barakat denge. Job mein barakat denge. Income mein barakat denge. Kahin se ghaib se Allah tumhari rosy pohunchayenge. To rosy barne ke ye maana hai. That your rosy is in, it doesn't mean you eat more samosas and more pakoras and more lustis and more biryani in Ramzan. No. Ramzan mein to control karna hai. Eating less, risk increases. And whoever, then the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever helps a, a poor person to fast, then he will get the reward of, which is equal to the fast of that poor person. And this reward will not reduce his reward in the least. That person will get full fast reward as well and you will get full reward for helping him to open that, break that fast as well. And it will be maghfiratan li dhunubihi wa itqa raqabatihi min al-nar. A source of forgiveness for your sins and your, your neck will be emancipated from the fire of Jahannam. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, do four things in Ramzan in abundance. Two which, which you need and two by which you can please your Rabb. The two by which you can please your Rabb are Say La ilaha illallah kalma tayyiba frequently in Ramzan. While you are coming to the masjid for namaz, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. Keep a tasbih in your hand and keep reading La ilaha illallah, 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 La ilaha illallah. And number two, astaghfar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Rabbi ghfirli, Rabbi ghfir warhamu wa anta khayrul rahimin. Oh Allah forgive me, oh Allah, muj, Allah mujhe maaf kar de, Allah meri bukhshish kar de, Allah mujhe maaf kar de, Allah meri tawba, Allah meri tawba. Keep seeking forgiveness from Allah throughout the day as much as you can. So in Ramzan, these two azkar need to be increased. Kalma and astaghfar. And two which you need are that you beg Allah for Jannah and you seek Allah's protection from the fire of Jahannam. In the dua of Tasbih we read, Nas'alullah al-Jannah wa na'uzu billahi min al-Nar. Subhan al-Maliki al-Quddu, Subhan al-Mulki wal-Malakud. So we can relax a little bit uh, after every four rakats and then get up for the for next rakat. So read the tasbih and in there at the end is we ask Allah for Jannat and we seek Allah's protection from the fire of Jahannam. So these are some virtues. Mawlana Saab will read to you fazail Ramzan of Hazrat Shaykh Rahmatullahi Alayhi and you can uh, learn the fazail virtues from there. Mawlana Sahib told me to mention some Masail as well. Lahu Nuh Mawlana Sahib. Wo Masail ke liye mein ye kitab laya hoon. Ye hum nahi likhi thi. Aap chahe to isko nijhe se khareed lo. Ye hai gift for Ramzan. Is mein sab Masail hain. Is mein Alhamdulillah English mein. Fazair bhi 40 hadith se hain. Us ke baad Masail hain. To aap isko khareed lenge. Inshallah aapko faida hooga. اور پڑھئے گھر میں بھی رکھئے فائدہ ہوگا خلاصہ اور مسائل is first of all we have to understand number one روزہ is important if we break one روزہ اور miss one روزہ the hadith says we can't make up for the ثواب of it even if we were to fast for the rest of our lives right that is how much ثواب there is in one روزہ if we break it without any excuse we can't make up for it even if we were to fast for the rest of our lives. So we have to make sure our Rosa is protected and we don't break any Rosa through silly mistakes. We have to remember that Rosa breaks by things that go inside the cavity of the body. Not by something that comes out of the body. Like tears come out of the body, phlegm coming out of the body. It doesn't break Rosa. Something that we eat or drink breaks the roza and with the exception of two things number one is vomit and number two is money semen these two things come out of the body and there are cases in which they break the roza money ejaculation sexual intercourse masturbation or any deliberation of uh, extracting the semen from the organ breaks the roza so don't do anything silly by which you break your Rosa during the month of Ramzan. 
qay and vomit will be either deliberate or unintentional deliberate qay deliberately and it's mouthful you put your finger inside and blah, 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 and then you vomit or you deliberately snuff something sniff smell something really foul and you know dirty and it and you smell you you deliberately uh, you know uh, vomit and it's mouthful rosa breaks if it's less than mouthful then there are two opinions imam muhammad says break imam yusuf says doesn't break and what is unintentional you know you are sick you're not well you are lying down in your bed and suddenly you get this vomiting then it doesn't break the rosa no matter how much it is mouthful or less than mouthful regardless of that it does not break because it's unintentional you've got nothing to do with it so where there is deliberate and mouthful it'll break and if it's not deliberate it won't break the rosa so you understand these two maslas other than this anything else that comes out that it doesn't break the rosa example blood comes out cupping you did cupping rosa doesn't break you went for a hospital for diabetes sugar test they take your blood out the rosa doesn't break because blood is coming out nothing's going inside the body so a diabetes test a blood test doesn't break rosa injection wo to andar jata hai na injection ye main baat baat kar raha hu bahar body se jo cheez nikalti hai uski ki whatever comes out usme se rosa nahi tutta hai in cheezon se aage wo goes inside okay one of sub since he mentioned injection we'll talk about injection injection normal injection doesn't break rosa because you remember the word i said what goes inside the cavity of the body inside the belly or inside the brain that's what breaks rosa right so if there is an injection we take something directly inside your belly inside the stomach then it will break the rosa like for example a person had a stroke and he can't swallow food so they put a tube over here and the direct the food the liquid goes inside that breaks the rosa similarly if there was some injection which goes direct into the brain it'll break but normal injection because it goes in the vein and the the medicine just goes into the blood stream and it goes around travels around the body that doesn't break the rosa the mashayikh fuqaha take the masla of that from snake bite because in the olden days there were no injections right there were so sometimes a snake would bite someone and the poison venom would go up the body but that wouldn't break the rosa so this injection it has a similar case it doesn't break the rosa now we move on to things that go inside the body the anatomy of the body mouth nose eyes ears and uh, our uh, private parts from the mouth if you eat something swallow it whether deliberately or by mistake rosa is going to break if you forgot now there's a difference between mistake and forgetfulness forgetfulness means you are keeping rosa today it's not ramzan and you forgot you go rosa you went to work and everybody was having a coffee and you had a cup of coffee as well and then said what tarikh mara roza ja so this is forgetfulness and mistake is you know you've got roza and you try to do kulli and gargal but while doing the kulli you swallowed water as well and you toba astaghfirullah mera to roza hai mera to solo kar liya pani this is mistake so forgetfulness doesn't uh, break roza your roza is okay even if you were to eat and drink out of forgetfulness or you forgot and you had sexual intercourse still your roza won't break because you forgot but mistake if you do something by mistake then mistake does break roza you have to understand that so if you were gargling and you did heavy gargling this is why hadith says baligh fil madmadati illa an takuna saiman do mubalagha in gargling you know gargle properly unless you are fasting if you are fasting then just gargle lightly okay don't do heavy and uh, my experience is don't raise your head when gargling just keep your head low and the water won't go up your throat down your throat so anything that goes through the mouth okay you eat something even if it's the size of a chana or something okay anything that goes down will break the rosa and 
it's it explained in here of what things can go down the throat. How? Nose. Okay. Uh, this includes going down the throat, includes smoking. You smoke, breaks the rosa. Asthma pump, a hey, problem. <laughs> Many people have asthma problem, but asthma has medicine inside. When you take the pump, medicine goes inside. The muftiyani kiram si rosa breaks because medicine is going inside. So, what's the solution? The solution is, you know, try and avoid any excessive activities during Rosa. Keep calm. Keep calm. Sit down. Calm. Don't do anything which can aggravate your asthma and you get an attack. Do everything slowly in slow motion. And if it does happen, then try and avoid it. But if you do have to take it, then take it as much as needed only and then do tashabbuh bi saim throughout the day. Thereafter, you can do qaza of it in winter when the days are short. And if you are an elderly person and you can't make qaza of it, or if you are so sick, you can't do qaza of it, then later on you might give fidya as well. But you have to try and keep the roza. Asthma pump does not give you the go ahead of missing your roza. Okay. Someone went to the hospital for appointment, general anesthetic, because there is some medicine that goes inside with it. General anesthetic breaks the rosa. Local anesthetic doesn't break the rosa. Like in the knees, injection, that doesn't break the rosa. Dentist appointments, do it before Ramzan. Have your dentist appointment, cleaning, whatever you need to do, tooth extracting in Ramzan. Because if you went in uh, before Ramzan, if you went in Ramzan and there is a dentist working on you, ah, and something goes down your throat, your rosa is gone. So try and avoid dentist appointments in Ramzan. Okay, toothbrush. You have toothpaste, then the taste, maybe the toothpaste is risk. It'll go down. You can feel it on your tongue. This is why it's makru to use toothbrush and toothpaste. Do it at the time of sehri before you start. Don't use toothbrush during the day. Some people say I have to go to work. Well, use miswak. Okay, if you have to go to work 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock and you go bad breath, then why don't you keep miswak in your pocket and use miswak? Okay, miswak is sunnat as well. And Ramzan is a good time to start miswak. So that you can keep miswak in your pocket and you use miswak. Good, alhamdulillah, sunnat as well. And your mouth will be clean as well. So these are things connected to the mouth. Some other masail mentioned here as well in the book. Also from the nose. Okay. If something you take a snuff like Vicks. Because it goes up the brain. Rosa breaks. If you have, have cold. And you take hot water. Put some Vicks in there. And take this towel on your head. And take steam inside. Your rosa breaks. Okay. S smoke, inhaling smoke deliberately. Okay, if smoke went inside unintentionally, like a woman is cooking in the kitchen and some smoke went inside, it's not her fault. But if someone deliberately took smoke, like there was agarbatti or bukhur, and he covered himself with the shawl and take the bukhur inside, then this will break because the smoke is going up, in, up his nose, deliberately he's taking it. It will break the rosa. Eye drops don't break the rosa because eye drops only stay in the eye. They don't go up the brain nor down the throat. You might feel a little bit of sting, stinging feeling over here for surma or anything. But that doesn't take any effect. No problem. You can apply surma uh, during rosa and it doesn't harm your rosa. Eardrops. Okay. If you went swimming, jump in the pool and water inside your ears, your rosa won't break. Because water, there is no benefit in, ro in water. But if you apply some medicine in your ears, then... Even though there is the eardrum, but the fuqaha, old fuqaha used to say, the medicine does go up the brain and breaks the rosa. But recently, Mufti Rafi Usmani Sahib and others have said, rosa will not break. So we've covered the cavities within the head. Now, Pishab ki jaga, urine. If a man has problem urinating and he, you know, uses something, applies some medicine in his organ, and it goes inside, then a man, because Imam Sahib says there is the bladder in between which stops uh, the medicine or whatever reaching into the belly, so it will not break the rosa. But for a woman, it will break the rosa. 
because there is nothing to stop that medicine from traveling upwards. So if a woman applies some medicine to her vagina, Rosa will break because it goes up. If she went for a smear test, try and avoid smear test in Ramzan. Take it before or after. But went for a smear test, the doctor's hand was dry and just checked inside once, Rosa will not break. But if he reinserted it or if, it were, if he used the surgical instrument and applied some gel to it, the gel goes inside, travels upwards, breaks the rosa. So women have to be careful with regards to that. From the anus, if something goes up there like enema, someone had constipation, doctor gave enema, it will travel up, it goes up to the place of hukna, the rosa will break. Um, similarly, if someone had piles, a doctor gave him cream, and he applied that cream up there, and the cream traveled upwards, Rosa will break. So you have to be careful with using piles, cream, or these types of things uh, in Rosa. Use it after iftar, don't use it uh, during the day. Similarly, if a person has problem urinating and he has to use catheter, so use it at night. Try and avoid using it during the day. Because there is difference of opinion. Some fuqaha say it breaks, others say it doesn't break. It's better to stay careful. Other than these, there are some more, more masayils in here about appointments, dialysis. In the dialysis, the blood stream is cleaned. Does it break rosa or not? You have to check in this kitab. I'm not going to tell you everything. Injections, acupuncture, endoscopy, angiography, laparoscopy, gastroscopy, endoscopy, nicotine patches. All these masail are mentioned over here. So buy that the kitab and read from there. Inshallah, Allah Pak will benefit you. Duru Shari Parlo. Huh? Well, a very common one, insulin injection in the store. It's a very common one. Hi. Like in insulin injection, stomach may lengi the foreign khana parega. Hana. To usse the piruza to diega. So, जो insulin injection लेते हैं वो अपने doctor से मशवरा कर ले कि मुझे रोजा के बारे में क्या करना चाहिए हां जो इंसुलिन नहीं लेते हैं टैबलेट सिर्फ लेते हैं उनको तो रोजा रखना चाहिए डायबिटीज वही कह रहे हैं हां फाइव टाइम्स अ डे फाइव टाइम्स अ डे इंजेक्शन फाइव टाइम्स अ डे इंजेक्शन हां तो वो तो मुश्किल है ना उसके लिए यू हैव लेकिन जो टैबलेट लेते हैं उनको तो रोजा रखना चाहिए मेरे वाली साहब 83 इयर्स के थे डायबेटिक थे को 10 12 साल से डायबेटिक थे लेकिन बराबर रोजा रखते थे हां और रमजान में तो डायबेटिक लोगों की तबीयत ज्यादा अच्छी हो जाती है अल्लाह पाक उनको गैब से कुछ ताकत और एनर्जी दे देते हैं क्योंकि वो कुर्बानी देते हैं तो अल्लाह भी उनके लिए आसानी करते हैं अस्मा पंप वो मैंने समझाया अंग्रेजी में एहतियात करें मुफ्ती आने किराम आम तौर पर ये कहते हैं कि चूंकि उसमें दवाई है तो दवाई अंदर जाती है तो रोजा टूट जाता है तो एहतियात करें उससे ना लें अगर मजबूरी है जान का खतरा है तो आप उस वक्त ले लें लेकिन फिर उस रोजे की कजा करना पड़ेगा ठीक है ओके भाई एनी अदर क्वेश्चन पूछ लो अच्छा वो आपने सवाल पूछ लिया तो इसमें है बहुत से सवाल के जवाब आते हैं ये बुक आप पढ़ लेंगे आपको फायदा होगा इंशाल्लाह ठीक है मौलाना दुरूद शरीफ पढ़ने शॉर्ट दुआ سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك اللهم لك الحمد ولك الشكر اللهم لا اوصي ثنانا عليك انت كما اثنيت على نفسك اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يا ارحم الراحمين हमें रमजान तक सलामत रखिए